He was a big fan of Kog'Ma, but change is coming in, not giving him a whole lot of chance. G2 are actually the ones that ban out the Gangplank themselves, and that is an insta-lock of the rise for Senkux. Ooh, so this was something that uh, we talked about on the analyst desk yesterday where we looked at the dream comp, the best case scenario for Misfits. And I think that Ryze is one of the champions that Senkux can perform the best on. Statistically, it is one of his lesser performing champions, but in terms of its role, its ability to roam around the map and go even and hold his own in the vast majority of matchups, I think it fits his style and it's something the Misfits need him to be, which is consistent, especially against the powerhouse that is Perks in the middle lane. Now, you want to talk about about fitting styles. Yankos gets that quick lock-in on the Jarvan, and Yarnan gets his chance to go at bat with the Tristana, so that's a bit of a takeaway from Hansama, but already kind of drafting to those strengths, hyper-carrying for the late game, but Yankos already looking to try and get those engaged on with the jungler. Now, Alfari's going to lock in on the Nar. What's the next pick going to be? Do they pick an AD carry for Hansama here or risk more bans being thrown his way? Now, again, we have seen a high focus on early champions uh, like the Ezreal for the side of Hansama. He's not afraid to pick that also into the Tristana. It would fit with this kind of mid-game style that they're going for. And given the Misfits are drafting for a 1-3-1, you can put the Ezreal in the middle lane and it becomes very difficult to gank him as well. So I feel it would fit into this comp that they're drafting. But very interesting that Maxler would choose to go for the Kha'Zix. We haven't seen a Kha'Zix now for a little while. He kind of fell out of favor, given more priority on things like the Zac, the Java, and the tanky junglers. But Kha'Zix has always been known to be a great duelist into the Java. In early skirmishes, Kha'Zix always has the edge. Very true. In fact, he does. Perk's having a little bit of fun with the crowd. He flashes on the Asso before locking in Orn for Wonder. So there's a nice, comfortable, that's okay if I get pushed in, I'm still gonna be good in those team fights. So G2, definitely drafting around more of that engage once again. Feel like you gotta remember that this Orn can be flexed to support as uh, well. That's true. Right now, by it being locked in, it offers a safe matchup for Wonder to go into the Gnar up in the top lane. And I think that what they have the ability to do is if Misfits choose to not ban top laners right now, then they could even flex it to support and give Wonder something else like the Jace. Something you've always got to remember that is a very effective counter to the NARP in the top lane. Yeah, puts a little pressure on the Misfits side. Let's see what the Moose can come up with. Read from his notebook here. And the Ezreal banned away. So by not taking it earlier on, Hansama might have to dip deeper into the champion pool. Braum also going to be picked up. We've seen how effective it can be into the Orn, mitigating his engage potential. Uh, definitely a worthy ban there from G2, and they clearly see the value that Misfits have put on Ezreal as well. Misfits likely to round out their ban phase with something like an Azir take perks off something that he's shown a lot of proficiency on. A few more seconds remaining. They've already banned the Victor. Got some changes a bit back, and now it's an Alistair banned away. So oh, banking on the fact that that will be an Orn top. So we'll see right now for G2. I feel like that the safest thing to do would be to lock in a mid. Azir, very safe, fits with the comp, gives you good sieging, fits in nicely with the team fight that G2 have already drafted themselves. The big issue is you can't really send Azir off onto a side lane. But it looks like instead they're going to try and hold it off for as long as possible. We'll confirm that this Aunt is up in the top lane. Want to get that counter pick on the mid. Perks wants to have every advantage in the lane kingdom. Misfits, last couple picks for them. Where's the AD carry gonna go for Han Sama, first of all? Looking at some of the AD carries that he has played so far this split, he's played a lot of Kog'Maw after the nerfs and against this kind of comp. I would be hesitant to pick that champion up. He kind of wants mobility to Zaya. And Rakan would be the option for me. And unfortunately, he locks it in just before I get to say. Still counts, Vedius, it's okay. So they got lovers in the bot lane. Already had their mid locked in for Senkux, of course. And now for G2, the last question to answer is what's the mid lane going to be? Now, if they lock in the Zoe, this is one of the big comfort picks for Perks. He has had some phenomenal performances on this champion. You remember the bout that he had with Nuke Duck, where they were constantly going back and forth. High skill champions in Zoe and LeBlanc. We've seen what he's done against Splice, where he single-handedly won that game through his performance on that champion. This guy is more than happy to pick up the Zoe, and I'm expecting nothing but a fantastic performance when he gets it.
Now looking at this composition from G2, very scary, not just with the comfort for perks. Yarnin's got some late game scaling. Yankos on the engage. They've got two beefy tanks. Seems like a very balanced G2 composition, Vettius. Well, I was a little concerned in terms of what Zoe really offers in team fights because she's much more about poke and pick, but it facilitates the siege extremely well. And you can send her off onto a side lane. You have to be a little careful, but at the very least, if they get an early advantage, she will be able to hold off that rise and make sure he's not creating terror. But in terms of early game, Misfits, this is what this comp is all about. You've drafted strong laners across the board. You've got a jungler that's all about early skirmishing and finding those leads during the first 15 minutes of the game. Misfits, they're going to try and get that early edge. They're going to try and snowball. And against G2, this is a big statement to make. Can they do it? Can they shift away from this late game style that they found a lot of their wins with? And can they shut down G2 in the early game, which is a team that are right now fighting for that top spot in Europe? Well, shutting down that win streak on any given day would be a huge thing for Misfits. But to then tie G2 in the standings would be even better for a team that has had some trouble finding their footing. Will they be able to fire off a win here and take down Kings of Europe. We will find out as we load up onto Summoner's Rift once again. So we talk a lot about these matchups, Pyra. In the bottom lane, Zyra Khan, really aggressive. They're all about getting a lot of lane advantages. Against the Tristan attack, I can definitely see how effective it can be. We've got to remember the buffer that you have on that jump from Trist means that it can sometimes be difficult to lock her down when you're going for those all-in plays. Tarek, though, is a little easier to lock down. That stun is very linear with the mobility that these two champions have. You can very easily play around it. And I would not be surprised to see Max Law and Seng look for plays towards the bottom side of the map. And let's not forget, the last time these two teams fed off, right at the beginning of the split, it was Han Sama and Mickey drafting the Zaya Rakan. They had the Galio in the mid lane. Maxlaw was on the Lee Sin. All they tried to do was camp bot, and G2 answered every single time. Have Misfits grown from that last time, or are they still going to suffer to the same kind of counterplay that G2 were able to bring? We'll certainly find out not too long from now, but you know, perks he can go roaming as well if he wants to try and give some backup. Wonder on the spellbook starting off with the ignite, but he can swap it out for that teleport whenever he'd like. In the dual lane matchup too, just pound for pound 2v2. Ansem and Mickey X have definitely had the better of the split so far compared to Yarnin and we did. That's very true, but in this early laning phase, we've got to take note of where the junglers are starting because early leashes can contribute pretty significantly to early tempo in terms of being able to get the push. The fact that Yanko's decided to start towards the top side means the Wonder will get later into the lane, which means Alfari already gets an early push off. He gets forced underneath the tower and he'll start losing a lot more farm than he typically would like to. However, in the bottom, the fact that Hyun and did get to the lane first means that they won't get cheesed by the early level two of the Zyra Khan, and it mitigates some of that early laning power that Han Sama and Mickey wanted to try and take advantage of. It's very important, especially with as potent a damage they're already going to have. Ignite early on. So they said, to walk away. the level two play. We're going for the all-in level one. Nobody expects it. Big surprise there. Now let's see who can get that level two. All right, it's going to be Mickey X and Han Sama, but immediately answered. No real difference in experience there, but do expect a lot more skirmishes to be happening. Alfari taking advantage of his push position to go and throw down a ward just in case Yankos wants to take a trip up towards the top side anytime soon. I'm checking on the mid lane as well. Senkooks on this rise. It's been a staple pick for a lot of European mid laners, but Senkooks definitely preferred the likes of some pretty mobile mid laners overall. And of course, once that realm warp becomes available to him, he can do what he likes to do best and help make plays everywhere but the mid. Another hop in, but Yarden's already buffered his hop away. You can see the amount of harassment that Hyanin is currently taking in the lane. Yankos will jump over the wall and will be spotted out by this ward. So Max will have that information available to him. Deciding to go towards the early scuttle crap in the top side. And Alfari actually being pushed under his turret right now. That is due to the fact that the minion wave hit uh, Wonder's turret early on. It's always exciting to watch these two top laners battle out Wonder. Statistically, one of the best early game performing uh, top laners. And Alfari, not really known for his laning prowess so far this split, but he's hold his own, primarily going for champions like the Gangplank, where he's had way more value in these later game fights. Yeah. Of course, you know, back in 
the first split that Misfits did enter the ULCS. Laning was definitely one of big strengths for Alfari. Comparatively, he would always shut down laners. Maybe we see a little bit more of that starting to come in later on. It's going to be hard to do against Alexa Wonder, though, for sure. Where are Hansam and Mickey X going right now? Trying to get a little bit of vision down. It goes towards the bottom side of the jungle. Blastcone popped preemptively. They're trying to play it as safe as they can. Yep, and we've got to keep our eyes on what Maxol looks to do right now. His focus is on the farm. Not too surprising for Akaz, because remember that he will scale well, likely building towards high damage, but there's always this risk of Kha'Zix. You have to be careful of. He will be squishy as a bit more trading happens down in the bottom lane. Oh. Maxwell or Yankos can spot each other out not too far from there as well. Here's the hop over, trying to get a lot of damage onto Yankos, goes right into his jungle. Alright, Dragon Strike, Yankos turns a little bit of damage onto the bug, but Maxlor gets the better of that trade right now, and he's going to therefore own this side of the river. And this is exactly what we were talking about in the draft. The great thing about Karzix is his early ability to win out on these trades and skirmishes against a Jarvan. So he's not afraid to move into the enemy jungle and look for these small fights, especially when you have so many pushing lanes all across the board. A lot of confidence coming out from Max Lord, but also intelligent confidence. He's using the pressure that he does have available to him. Yeah, difference between confidence and cockiness for sure. Getting away a few of these camps to try and keep Yankos down. Did mention that he's going to be making most of these big plays prior to the 15 minute mark. Does he need to really make a whole lot of visits to these lanes though? It's kind of hard when they're all pushed in. That's very true. And it's very much revolving around that level six mark for both mid and jungle for the side of Misfits. Once you have uh, the ultimate available on the rise, that's when it becomes much easier to look for these bot runs, especially if they can find successful trades like this. Misfits looking to put a lot of pressure down and all we're waiting for is those crucial level ups. Taking advantage of those low cooldowns on the Ignite. Mickey X not afraid to pop it immediately. Double teleports back up towards the top side. They're both out of the game. We're getting closer and closer to that level six mark for sure. But I think I want to talk about the mid lane matchup, to be honest. It's been a little bit quieter right now. But Perks, honestly, is, is generally speaking on a very different level than what Senkux has shown so far this split. Yeah, you just look at some of the statistics for Perks. He is one of the best performing mid laners in Europe right now. His laning is fantastic. His damage contribution to the team is also fantastic. And KDA, yes, it suffers a little bit. But considering the amount of plays that this guy makes, I think you can forgive him for being fourth place in that department. You look across the board and Senkux, he really is one of the worst performing laning mid laners that we have in Europe. Tenth in terms of CSD, tenth in terms of damage percentage, and we heard from the support staff of Misfits that this guy was going to be an upgrade. He had a deeper champion pool. He had uh, a greater willingness to grow in terms of development. He was a little more standard in terms of what he brought to the table. But in terms of lane prowess, it's difficult to argue that he brings more than what Power of Evil did. One of the core identities that Misfits did have was the Power of Evil was that big carry. We were still looking for that second carry throughout the regular season. And right now, all we can do is, or Misfits fans rather, have to rely on the process and hope that Senkux will find his form, find his place. But you have to imagine that against a powerhouse like Perks, is he going to really be able to find it today? Yeah, I mean, that's the real question, right? Because Senkux, it's interesting uh, what you talk about, the support staff saying, oh, you know, he's, he's looking to grow, he plays like a lot more standard. To me, whatever I think of Senkux is always like, he wants to make these roaming plays and play these different things like Aureli and Soul and stuff. He's on the rise, he can definitely make some roaming plays. It looks like teams are roaming to him now. Maxlor and Mickey X looking to come in. Oh, trying to catch up the route onto Perks. He's gone golden, flashing away. Let's see if they got the damage, taste in their fear. That's a flash burn though. Nice play by Perks to get out of the 1v3. Excellent response there from Perks. Invisibility from Maxlor combined with the route from Senkux. Set Perks recognizes the situation that he's in. Instant stopwatch. Wasn't expecting Misfits to look for a play into the middle lane. They want to try and shut down the strong point of G2. But he's able to get away with his life. Yeah. Burns a stopwatch, burns a flash. He's going to have him back up a little sooner, of course. Thanks to the unsealed spellbook on his side. And now this is going to give a chance for maybe G2 to get back some pressure. Yankos actually dodging out some vision. He'll be spotted on that ward. However, Sun's coming in on Sama Mickey X. They're going to have to get out of dodge. Yarnin hopping back. He's got his ultimate. Doesn't want to use it though, didn't quite find the angle to try and get it back, but Maxlor turning it around once again, and it looks like Senkux is coming to the party as well, looking for Yarnin. Immediately he flashes out, however, we're going to have first blood here, it goes the way of Mickey as Yanko's given his life. Try and keep Yarnin safe. 
you got to criticize G2 for trying to make that gank happen down in the bottom lane. They just saw Pooks go back to base and being forced out of lane. This meant that Senkux was always going to have priority on roaming down to the bot side, especially when he has ult and now Max Law. Ooh, not able to find the pick. Could this be his death? Oh, it is! Hello, Perks turning around. Now, can he get out? That was one magic trick. Will he be able to do another? Not today. Senkux gets revenge. Perks demonstrating some of the capabilities he has on this champion, recognizing, oh, Maxlaw, you made a big mistake. You should not be engaging upon me. And he's able to get his team a return kill and their first on the scoreboard. Also, for anybody who was worried about the state of Zoe, after some nerfs, still pretty good. Still feels like she's pretty strong. So, Yankos in full vision, works towards bot side, trying to set up the gang. But look in the river. They're already moving down. Zoe cannot get to this any faster than what Ryze is able to do. You add to the fact that he has the Realm Walk, and it's just, this was a poor decision from G2. They didn't need to try and force this play, and they did not respect the ability of Misfits to get the collapse down towards the bot side. A lot of mobility, and again, it's it's what Senkux does best to try and make plays on other lanes. Now, here's what turns back around, Sleepy Trouble Bubble, and Perks is like, wait a minute, you're yeah. dead. Squishy Jungler also gets hit by the Sleep. Surprising amount of damage from Zoe in the early game, uh, but fortunately for Misfits, Senkux is able to get the return kill. All right, Forge God was called, but Alfari's already walking out. Looks like with the swap up, G2 are leaving Wonder in here, and they want to accelerate this game, getting first Tower Blood. See if they're able to do it. Uh, keep your eyes on what the junglers decide to do because by G2 making this map movement. Oh, we don't have time. Uh, they're actually going for a bit of a skirmish. Yeah, level advantage on Max Lord is going to force Yankos out. Bubble comes as well. And now Misfits are actually going to be able to secure the first tower blood thanks to the damage they've already dealt up towards it. But G2 aren't too far behind. Now, what I would have expected from Max Lord was to actually go towards the bot side so they could get themselves the Infernal. It may cost them the uh, Rift Herald, but securing that objective could provide a lot of benefit in these later stage fights where, remember, Misfits want to try and keep the snowball going, and in fact, that's what they're going to go for right now. All right, Maxlor taking advantage of this damage to try to start off that Infernal Drake. So, Dust has settled a little bit from a couple early game skirmishes. We're two to one right now. It's Misfits with the gold advantage, looking to make it a Dragon advantage as well. Maxlor should be able to solo this one out pretty easily. Not going to be spotted, of course, by the likes of G2. A lot of vision invested by the Misfits around this pit as well. Oh yeah, a lot of control wards on the bottom side of the map. Some of them will get spotted out by G2, but Misfits so far taking advantage of their early game composition. Already better compared to what was <laughs> what they were able to do in their very first game of the split, where G2 always had an answer. You asked about the growth of this team, I remember, and it's it's kind of evident right now that this is the difference between what happened in week number one. They're already starting to hold their own a little more against this G2 squad. And arguably a G2 squad that's also grown quite a bit. But now the hard part comes to Misfits because you look at the scaling from G2 and you recognize they're definitely going to have the edge when you get to the late game. So Misfits, they need to keep the pressure up. You can't afford to slow down now. With your stronger early game, with the stronger laners that you've drafted for yourself, you need to still look for these outer towers, start setting up towards the Baron, start forcing those kind of fights at the point in the game where you're stronger. One misstep, just like we saw from Schalke, can stall out long enough for G2 to reach those big three item spikes and then start winning these fights later on. Yep, so far only sitting on one or a little bit less. We're still only 12 minutes into this one. Of course, the kill that Perks got helped him buy the Morello Nomicon too, so he's not gonna be too shy for damage. We've already seen what Zoe can do with only half completed items. And Merc Treads being picked up from Senkoks. Anyone at home would highly recommend getting Merc Treads against Zoe. The extra tenacity is insanely valuable. Especially and now that it applies to sleep. Also that, yes. And also, if you are running the Precision Tree at all, grab the uh, tenacity one, because it really helps. Like, it, it's really helpful. Uh, so, now we need to move back to what the junglers are doing. Yankos hasn't been that active in the early game. The one play that he did make ended up backfiring horribly. But his Ma Max Lord is focusing on the vision towards the top side, but there's still G2 that have main control over that area. Max Lord still sniffing through this jungle, see if he can find anybody, maybe looking for Yankos, but Yankos is already back. Instead, he just goes ahead and throws a couple wards down, trying to keep eyes. Once again, hard to gank these lanes, they've been pushed a little bit, but what's pretty easy to gank oh. is the Rift Herald. Yeah, the, the pathing that Max Lord took, though, means that he won't actually be spotted, because he used his ultimate to pass through the river, through where G2 had no control wards. He then came over the back of the wall using the blast code, which means that in theory, G2 should not actually be able to see what is going on. And given that no one else has come over to help him out, Maxwell should be able to secure this objective for free. Goes. Oh, he doesn't get it! Oh no! 
That's what you call unlucky. Yeah, indeed. No awareness there from Yankos. And a free objective coming out from Misfits. This will make sieging on the middle lane that much easier. Especially against the Zoe, who always has that threat of landing the Sleepy Trouble Bubble and then forcing you back after getting slapped in the face. Mm -hmm. Nice play by Misfits jungler. Sneaking it out. Okay, teleport coming in. Perks utilizing his spell thief to get back to lane a little bit faster. Senko's a little low on the mana department right now, and he is pushed up. Yanko's looking to come around the side. Maybe get a counter jungle of his own, however. Enhance recall. Maxlor's already out. Nothing for him to take. Maxlor, his pathing this game has been pretty strong. Decided to go for boots of mobility. Trying to take advantage of the invisibility that he gets from his ultimate once it's upgraded and just utilizing the fact that he can then stealth his way through the jungle and get a lot of deep wards down. So uh, I like this innovation here from Max. That's a fast bug for sure. Get this clears on nice and early, but you know, talked about in draft, the 15 minute mark is kind of when the tables start to turn a little bit in favor of Yankos, who hasn't had as much action in the early game. G2 we know are looking for that scaling later game style of play. Has Maxlor really done enough as we crest that 15 minute mark? Well, I think that given the They've taken the bot tower and they have the Rift Held. They're set up to continue making plays. But it's now about the execution of said plays from this point on. Mickey and Maxwell will be grouping up a lot more to ascertain much more deep vision. And it looks like they're still playing towards the bot side. Rather than go towards the tier one tower in the top, their eyes are on securing away this blue buff and setting up for the Infernal Drake that's going to be spawning in about two minutes time. And yeah, we really have seen a lot of play around the bottom side for the teams right now. It's less about the mid, even though a few attempts were made to try and shut perks down. Recognizing that threat. Ooh, Senkux does get the root on. Let's see if he has the damage. That machine gun rise starting to come online. Of course, doesn't quite have the damage yet. So he opted for that abyssal mask first to keep himself nice and tanky. Good punish there though from Senkux. Perks messed up his uh, paddle star just a little bit. Uh, allowed Senkux to just walk up, root him down, take half his health away. Misfits will successfully take away that blue buff. Now I want to see them utilize this Rift Herald. Where will they look to put it? I imagine the mid lane, given that it will be the hardest lane for them to secure. But it looks like he still has about a minute and 30 seconds left on it. So he's got to be, he's got to look to make that play soon. What I imagine, they group up mid, they use the Rift Herald, take tower, then with pushing mid while Perks looks to catch the wave, they then rotate down to Drake as it's spawning in about 45 seconds. Uh, and then they'll be able to secure themselves all the objectives that they could want. Sounds like a foolproof plan to me, Vettius. We'll see if they end up doing it. Here are the pings coming down. Bot oh, yeah. lane's already been pushed up from the side of Misfits. And Maxlaw, he's setting up deep vision towards the top side of the map to keep an eye on whether or not Wonder will look to roam down. Ooh. Not going to be able to stop the Rift Herald being popped, but he does go to sleep for a few seconds. Shelly wanted to have a nap before she knocks down the tower. And here come the rest of Misfits, stage one of the plan. And G2, no, there is no way to contest this one. So down it will fall. Tower number two over to Misfits. Next phase. Clear out some vision. Step down towards the dragon, spawning in 10 seconds. Exactly that, Pyra. By the book is Misfits. This is what uh, we heard the analysts talking about and why they were often considered the discount G2, the team that always tried to play it by the book but could never quite do it as well as the former G2 squad. Ah, uh, they're the margarine into G2's butter. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just a little aftertaste. Exactly that, but right now G2 are looking to answer. They don't want to give this Infernal up for free. Both top laners have roamed down. I'm looking forward to a fight right now, Pyra. Looks like it. G2 trying to make their escape. Oh, nice quickness going in, and they're going to try to melt through those health bars. Yanko starts out with a pick onto the bug, but Terra Ultimate comes in a little bit too late. Perks is going to pick up one. Now Hansama running for his life. G2 got the better of that fight in spades. And they will claim the spoils of war. This time it's an Infernal Dragon. That fight went so quickly, Pyra. I thought Perks had just been blown up right from the start. But he was actually able to flash out. And it was Max Law and Mickey that ended up dying in that exchange. So let's get a slow-mo of exactly what Perks was able to do in this situation. Because I thought that he was for sure dead. Misfits come for the collapse, instant engage, and then he's just quickly able to flash out and then he gets the Tarek ultimate. All the while, they were focusing down this very squishy target in the form of uh, the Kha'Zix on the front line. And then given that Mickey had no way to get out of that situation, but they could cleanly pick themselves up a second kill. G2 coming out ahead in that last fight. Yeah, nicely played the equalize on the dragon and, you know, talk about that scaling. 
Well, if you're able to do this in the phase of the mid game, it's already looking great for G2. They can just keep this going. And let's not forget Pyro. We talked about how execution of these early to mid game comps is so important because if you make too many misplays, you get slowed down, and that buys time for your opposition to build up these crucial items that they are so reliant on. That's what makes them the late game threat. It is those power spikes. And already you start to see a couple of crucial items being picked up for the side of G2. Yeah, we're a little halfway there on some of the big carries. Perk sitting on a couple of pieces to try and get himself forward. The Tristana, just the static shiv, but halfway towards an infinity edge as well. So Misfits are going to have their work cut out for him to try and push this one back. And it's obviously not over yet for Misfits. They had a bit of a bad fight earlier on, but they still have the pressure advantage. You can see two and a bit thousand gold in their favor. They're going to extend that even more by securing this top lane tower. And ne the next big objective becomes Baron. 15 to 25 minutes is where it's going to be crucial oh. for Misfits to not make any big misplays. Another storm. Well, it looks like that might have been misplay number one. Mickey X trying to turn it around into something here. Featherstorm, the knockback. G2 are not going to be able to find anything else. Perks tried to get one last parting shot in. Nothing doing. Misfits just didn't have the damage to take out top turret. So G2 stall for now, but look at the position that Senkux and Max Law are in. Oh. oh, Raz is going to sleep. Let's see if G2 are going to do something about it. Another Paddle Star. Going nowhere. That one's just going to deflate. Baron does spawn as well, but G2, they are not done yet. They want to get the collapse on the Senkux. Uh oh. Oh, he missed. Uh, oh no, Zinkux, he almost got out for a second. Couldn't quite make it happen. That cleanse. It just a little bit too early. The sleep did not last as long because once you use the cleanse, follow-up CC does get reduced in terms of its duration. But unfortunately for Misfits, they split apart. Zinkux, he had no choice. Look, you can see here, he cleanses the knockup rather than the sleep. He has the Merc Treads and the, uh, and the cleanse buff, to yeah. help. But unfortunately for him, uh, the chase was likely going to kill him anyway. So yeah. another advantage gain for G2. And, and look at that gold gap. Just a few seconds ago, it was 2,000 Pyra. Now, all of a sudden, that, that's been reduced to only 1K. Yeah, so Misfits find themselves in a little bit of a harder spot than they were earlier on in this game. And time's starting to run, run out. I don't know if Senkux would know that, though, of course. With uh, the way Rise has been changed these days, he's not keeping too much track of time. But it's a little unfortunate. G2, there's a reason these guys have the all-time head-to-head, though. Every iteration of them. Remember, we saw at the beginning the all-time 11-4. Six of the last times they've met. And it includes the Summer Finals, by the way. That's been G2's to own. It has. It's definitely on the other side of that matchup. Misfits have struggled for the last year to really prove their superiority over the uh, reigning kings of G2. And so far in this early game, Misfits have demonstrated some positive things, but They've made a couple of individual missteps here and there, and G2 have been able to successfully punish. The Baron is now alive. There will be a third Infernal Drake on the board that both teams will be more than happy to grab for themselves. But with this control being set up around the objective, again, G2's goal is to stall. Remember, they're waiting for those big item spikes. They don't want to try and force that many fights right now. If they can find a couple picks here and there, that's great for Zoe. But it's more about the late games, more about the 30 to 35 minute onwards mark for this G2 squad. And the pressure's on Misfits. Can they make these plays happen? Can they find the fights? They've tried it a couple of times, even with the early game advantages they'd built for themselves. G2 were able to force them back more often than not. This is troubling for Misfits right now that they just can't quite find the picks they're looking for. However, while G2 have backed away, this gives them a chance to try and clear out some of this vision around the Baron Pit. It's only going to be a momentary lapse, though. Misfits still thick around this pit, this jungle, trying to clear away the vision. But G2 are coming back. A lot of communication going on stage right now. G2, a lot of the pings coming down, trying to spot out where Max Law is. Keeping the team updated. You've got to remember, with the mobility and stealth that he does have, Max Law is a very scary threat. Yet to complete his first item, though, which you would imagine is the Dusk Blade of Drakthar to give him that extra bit of burst, still will be very squishy, though. Very much what you would expect of the Kha'Zix, but he has struggled to really have that great early game. Really just getting blown up in a lot of these fights. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Misfits, I think you said it right, needing to find some of those picks and 
whether it's onto perks or Yarnin, that's exactly what they need, but it's so hard to do, especially the way we did is playing these Cosmic Radiances as well. When the fights are actually on, that's starting to turn the difference. We saw it earlier when they try to engage the choke point of the jungle. And now, kind of leaving an opening here in the mid. G2, the Wrecking Crew just comes through. G2 secure a very easy tower in the middle lane. Misfits were not in a position to defend it. And now G2 will have priority around the Dragon. At this point in the game, I think they'd be pretty happy to take a fight. But let's see what our Misfits are looking to do. They are around the Baron, but no, they're not going to force it down. Free objective going in the favor of G2, and now the game starts to look like it's going in the favor of the reigning champions. They seem to have so much more control over the game. Misfits, they seem a little hesitant to force that many plays. Yeah, just trying to grab what they can out of the G2 jungle, but hesitant to pull the trigger try and go for the big play because they know G2 is pulling ahead. But the problem is they got scaling on their side too. So what can you do? Dustblade finish from Axlor. See if he can try to get a pick off onto somebody. Here we go. Quickness are going to find two. Let's see if they get the damage out. Yankos going hopping. The Terra Ultimate comes out. Now they know they can't take the fight any further. So they hop the wall. Baron gets procced though by the explosive shot of Yarnin. Axlor loses the vast majority of his HP to the Baron. No summoner spells were actually used, only a trade of ulties between supports. Another great setup for G2. Again, still just trying to stall this game out. Misfits starting to feel the pressure. They try to find that pick that we just talked about, Pyra. Unable once again to do so. And now we're starting to look a little more like what we saw the first time these two teams met, where Misfits, they drafted more towards the early game. Last time they struggled to get these early leads. This time around, they successfully did it. But then they made these couple of individual misplays, which G2 so effectively punished. And we're transitioning to that state in the game where Misfits, they're going to have to take a couple of gambles. They're going to have to take risks if they want to take advantage of this comp. They still have the 1-3-1. There's still a lot of disengage available to them. Uh, with the things like the Zaya, her ulti, very difficult to catch her out in the middle lane. But this G2 squad is still very scary. The Zoe is so very strong. Let's see how Misfits look to answer. Yeah, I wonder if Senkooks can really step up on this rise right now. He, he's definitely going to have some strength for himself, but he's still trying to stack up, building up that tier. Has the needlessly large rod, in addition to his other completed items. If he's on that side lane, that could be scary, but there is a teleport coming in. Alfari in Meganar form, excuse me, it was going to be Mickey X all along, and now let's see if the counter engage comes through. It did, does not get melted through, but Maxlor does, in fact, Danko's flashing away. Misfits just don't have the damage they need to finish the fights, and Senkus is going to fall, courtesy of Yarnin. It all goes wrong again for the Misfits. A huge team fight once more, going in the favor of G2, but I don't think they've done just yet, Pyra. Another storm for Han Sama, but he's got Wonder and Yarnin at his back. The knockup for Mickey X, and he's just out of there, just like that. Wonder's still coming in, looking to chase him down, and Misfits, they are running out of ground. G2, clear away two, and now it's time for the Baron. Fantastic fight once again for G2. It was Misfits that felt the need to try and force something. The double TP coming from Alfari and Mickey unfortunately fails. Perks once again playing phenomenally on the Zoe. Gets so much damage down onto those primary targets. Allows G2 to get the turnaround and will secure themselves the big purple world. All right, well, they've got the scaling. They've got the dragons. They've got three and a half minutes on the Baron buff, and they got this fight. Let's take a look at how it started. So G2, they're looking for a pick around the Baron area, and that's when Misfits decide to try and force the play. The sleep here comes down onto Mickey rather than Alfaro, which means he can still throw the damage out. But they can't burst with it down. This is a four versus five, and it's Maxlaw that dies before Hyanan even arrives. Senkux isn't in a, in a position anymore to deal damage. He ends up dropping, and G2, they just continue on with the chase. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. Misfits, you can see these attempts almost working for them, but they just barely don't have the damage, and well, we know how that one all ended, so we'll see what G2 end up doing with their last three minutes of the Baron buff. Maxlaw trying to hold the wave down on the bottom, but Wonder's up on the top with it. Everybody has the Baron on the side of G2. Misfits. It's going to be tough for them now because all game we've talked about this scaling. And now, oh, G2, they're just going for a fight. They are indeed. Let's see, Yanko, so he's going a little bit low as well. Maybe they can find this here. Ansama already finds the jungler. Cosmic Radiance comes in. That resets the fight for just a few seconds. Alfari, though, is about to go Mega. Maxlor, he looks around the side, doesn't find anything. So G2, itchy trigger finger, they lose a Baron buff. So what we've identified, Pyra, is that if you initiate the fight, you're going to lose. Because every time Misfits have done it, they failed. And the one time Yankos decides to engage, he ends up dropping down to Hansama. 
This will stall out for Misfits just a little bit, but G2, they still secure themselves a town. Just barely. It's not actually fallen just yet. However, let's see if they can force the fight. Around the side comes Maxor looking for Yarnik. Can he get the pick off onto the 80 carry? They've already found Mickey X though. Perks deletes him. And Perks and Yarnik, just the two carries alone, are taking the fight to Misfits. A double kill from Perks. This guy is a madman. It takes the rest of the team to take him down. Oh my word, Perks, he just continues to do it. Shuts down Max Law once again. Ends up being a two for two trade overall. And Misfits are gonna struggle to gain anything off the back of that. You come into Lane Kingdom with your entire team, Vettius, and Perks still takes you out. This dude is so good especially on a champion as strong as Zoe. This guy can never afford to be underestimated. This is why so many mid laners show their respect to him. And when you think about this guy who came in in 2016, he was a hot shot, he was cocky. He, he wanted to be the best by just outperforming everyone. He had to be humbled after his first international experience where he really identified, okay, I'm not hot stuff. I'm not as good as I thought I was. And the growth he's made from then to now Perks has really come into his own and really has earned the, the title of being one of, if not the best, mid laner in Europe. And it's been a very different story for his counterpart throughout the years. Senkooks came in the same split on that Splice team. We'll talk about him in a minute as Alfari getting chased down. Call the Forge God trying to dodge it out. Knocked up by Wonder. Yarnin coming in for the cleanup duty. And oh, that Meganar can't come soon enough. Yarnin's going to pick him off. 30 minutes on the clock. We're 9 to 5. Almost dead even on gold, but G2. They are scaling into that late game. Misfits starting to lose focus as Alfari ends up burning a flash, even though it resulted in his life. Misfits, they may be able to punish with a tier two tower in the top, but look at the rest of G2 in the middle lane. It doesn't matter if you're one through one and when everybody else is trying to take down the mid turret and wonder trying to stop these backs on Sama Mickey X looking for the outplay, but the base is already falling to pieces here. No one's at home. Misfits knocking down the front door. Wonder just trying to keep Miss uh, Hansam and Mickey X occupied. I should say there's the knockup. Maybe they can get a kill on him by pulling back with the blade collar. Featherstorm coming out. Wonder still holding on to life here. Hansama finally gets him, but at what cost? Well, it looks like an inhibitor and a tier two tower in the bottom lane. G2 gains so much control over the map, and I think Wonder can say worth after holding off the bottom lane of Misfits. That just smells like desperation right now. Misfits trying to find any opening they possibly can. They get one down, but they lose so much in their base. A little bit of breathing room, though. Let's see if they can keep the waves cleared in the mid. We heard from Alfari on the EU Euphoria podcast how when Misfits fall behind, sometimes the communication can break down. And I feel like we're starting to see examples of that. Individuals trying to step up to be big carries. The team not working as a unit. But it's difficult, you know, this get, this composition was all about getting those early leads and then snowballing it from there. And while they, they started off strong, G2 punished them for multiple attempts where they tried to force that lead that they had. And now G2, after securing the mid and hip, yes, the gold is still very close, but it still feels so heavily in favor of this G2 esports squad. It's part of the problem with uh, trying to play things by the book if the script gets deviated from. Don't always know what you're doing at that point. 32 minutes, we're getting into that point of the game. G2 are setting up a good old death brush, spotted out, courtesy of that ward. But for Misfits, it does seem like they're putting all the eggs right now in the Han Sama basket, which is typically what they've been able to do. But he's not on that hyper late game carry that he's been on so many times before, Pyra. You know, we talked about how Misfits, they're kind of experimenting. They're, they're showing different styles. They want to be able to play multiple different comps during the regular season. As long as they make it to playoffs, that's where they'll look to play their true strength. Again, things looked promising, but un quite unable to effectively punish this G2 squad as they look to secure themselves another tower, and they're gonna do it extremely quickly. Very clean play out of G2, and let's see what they're able to get any more. Hansama forced to use his Featherstorm. Let's try to avoid the Sleepy Trouble bubble. And the rest of G2, five members strong, looking to knock down door number two up towards the top side. Misfits, this might be one of their final stands. There's a big wave pushing in their favor on the opposite side of the map. But G2 can afford to take all the time in the world. They've got scaling. Baron's coming up in a minute, and they've got the siege on. Let's see, Dazzle trying to push them back here. The tower is already gone. Let's see if they can get the counter engaged. Maxlor looking to go around the side, but that bug has been punished before. And Sama even forced to use the flash. That's how afraid he was of the engagement G2. Mickey. 
Gonna have to dash out of that one, but G2, they secure themselves a tower. Could cost them a tower down in the bottom lane. But I don't think they're too upset about that as they can send Wonder down to catch the wave. He has his TP up as well. What G2 can't afford to do is concede control around this barren area. He's gonna be spawning in about 15 seconds time. Yep, Misfits gonna be stepping into a forest of wards here. G2 will have every bit of vision that they need. Now that tower in the bottom nearly fell down. There was a big wave of minions there, but now Wonders arrived to try and push the last vestiges of it away. G2. Five-man squad, four-man squad, I should say. Don't want to take this fight just yet. They take the blast going over the wall, and Misfits get some much-needed vision on the Baron pit, but they're going to have to cover their top lane because there's a lot of minions making their way towards that inhibitor. And there's no tower there, Pyra. That inhibitor will eventually go down if no one's there to answer it. Misfits just want to try and get some semblance of vision around this Baron so they can at least contest the objective if G2 look to start it. So far, it has been a game that has been heavily in control of G2 over the last 10 minutes. Misfits immediately rush back towards the Baron. They're going to rely on Senkix to clear out this wave. He's yeah. got his ultimate if he wants to end up joining. This This could be one of those big game-ending fights, though, Vettius, if it goes that way. I feel like it, but you have to give the edge over to G2. Every single fight that has happened in this game has heavily gone in the favor of G2. Oh, and you also look at all the checkboxes ticked. You've got those item spikes already in, and then some. The Tristana on four items, Perks Zoe on three and a half, and the tanks are tanky, Vettius. It's all the ingredients you need for a successful game win. Oh, yes. Yes, they are. But Han Summer is always that X factor for Misfits. Now, you did talk about him. Uh, we need to bring him up again, even though he's not on the latest of hyper carries. This side is still going to do damage. And this guy's positioning in team fights is something you always have to respect. Now, Hyanen. Ooh. Oh, that's a crit build right there. Max Lore is in trouble right now. Flash and tries for the juke, but he gets stomped on by Yankos. It is a 4v5 for the Misfits. And Alfari wasn't even there. That is going to be press the go button on the Baron. And that's why Kha'Zix kind of fell out of favor for many teams. Doesn't offer that tankiness, doesn't offer the late game value. G2 now setting up for the Baron. Let's see if Misfits can answer. They've got a lot of damage trying to take it out, but Perks around the side looking to get some chunk off of his own. Sleepy Trouble Bubble is dodged. The Baron's been peeled away. Senkux has to force the flash, and the Terra Gold to come down. Perks around the side looking for Han Sama. Doesn't find any damage, but the Cosmic Radiance is there. It's faded away. Meganar incoming. Alfari. Let's see if he can find a hop in. G2 didn't get any picks. Aren't going to force this. Aren't going to go any further, or are they? Looks like. The Rise is coming around the side, Alfari taking up a little bit too low, but Percy's gonna flash and juke away from Senkux, and now they can force this fight on. Perks on the front is just melting faces here. Hansam is a feather storm, but he is going da -da -da down. Three members killed on Misfits, G2 running for the base. Five members alive to the two. Oh! I mean, one left on Misfits, as they have the Nexus in their eyes and are looking to extend their win record over Misfits to seven and zero. G2 Esports. Not only looking for that, but looking for win number six in a row. There's a reason we call these guys the kings of Europe. 36 and a half minutes in and one incredibly decisive fight. Perks and G2 Esports flexing their muscles and proving they are dominant in EU. They now tie up the score with Vitality. They sit atop the standings. Their consistency and growth over the last few weeks continues to bear fruit for this squad. And Misfits, again, they tried something a little different, once again, to the style that has found them success. They didn't go for the late game scaling. They didn't try to win out on these big team fights. Instead, they tried to go for an early game strat. They got the early leads, but then they failed to properly execute. But they got properly executed, I'll say that much. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> that, 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 like, two-shot from Yarnin at the end, I mean, you know, you talk about a difficult player of the game, but I think that between him and Perks, that's going to be a hard one to call. Oh, yeah. I mean, Yarnin had a great game, 5-0-7. Perks had a great game. Wonder doing a great job. Like, uh, the only person I can really criticize is Yankos. A couple of poor decisions in the early game. Early game, early game. A couple of uh, engages that I didn't fully agree with, but the rest of his team really did step up, and if... Uh, if it's only one person underperforming and just not everyone and it's all reliant on perks, I definitely think G2 Esports can be very happy with that performance. Oh, yeah. The best thing for Yankos is you don't have to worry about, about smite steals because the opposite jungler was dead. It's very true. So G2 Esports looking clean, looking collected, knowing when they need to pivot, but also drafting very effectively. 
up against this Misfit squad. And in all honesty, there's been a lot of uncertainty about who really is the best team in Europe right now. Well, G2 are certainly putting a huge claim for themselves up at the top of the standings. They own the tiebreaker over Vitality, too. Yep, so this is a, definitely a big deal for G2 right now. And we've got Fnatic coming up next against Splice. If they win their game, I have a three-way tie for first, Pyra. And the best part is Fnatic and G2 play each other next week. Oh, man. We have so many exciting games here in Europe and even more to come. The standings have been so up and down. So many teams have been taking games off of so many others. H2K are on the rise. We saw Rockat take out Schalke. And based on Splice yesterday having the fastest game of the split, you can't help but be excited to see what they can bring against Fnatic next. Everything's so good. You know, we talked about the player of the game, and there's a fight right now for it between Perks, Yarnin, and also with Did for that player of the game. And you guys are, of course, in charge of the voting, so head over to at LOL Esports on Twitter. Give us your favorite. I cannot wait to see who the fans pick. I feel like people are going to edge towards Perks once again. Uh, Zoe was pretty dirty. Yeah, his Zoe is just so good. Uh, I'm looking forward to when the champion gets nerfed soon <laughs> uh, to see if he can still have that kind of an impressive performance on it. Mm. But regardless, with the tools that he's been given, this man always makes magic happen. That's very true, but I, I honestly want to give so much credit to Yarnan and Widdid for stepping it up. We talked about